The second uh, demo is showing you, you know, the capability to track <laughs> all of these, uh, you know, cost and performance and quality and all of that in, uh, in, in our LLM dashboard. So, so in this case, uh, we, we, we have an LLM tracker that has, a, a, you know, we, we have a backend uh, that supports a bunch of different models. And as people start using these models, we can give you real-time metrics on cost, performance, and quality. Uh, and these are the mo uh, models that we're using. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, you know, we have a real-time dashboard that shows you that, that adapts to your business KPIs. So if you're focused, for example, on cost minimization, we would choose the appropriate uh, model for that as well. So let me jump to the screen and show you what that looks like. So this model now shows uh, some useful information. Uh, it shows that we've run, you know, 1500 prompts so far. The total money we've spent is 41 US dollars, which is a significant amount of money, you know, for 1500 prompts. So you can see how the multiplicative effect of using these models can, can really, uh, you know, impact your budget. Uh, one thing you'll, you may notice is that GPT-4 is a huge percentage of this, this amount. Uh, there's a bunch of different models and we have a leaderboard that shows you, uh, you know, both the, the, the response time. And so the, the, there are a few models by Grok and others, uh, and I'll, I'll talk about these models in a second. Uh, uh, and, and then there's a few open source models like Llama and Mixtra. Uh, and you can see that certain models perform very well. Certain uh, models have low costs and things like that. So what I'm going to do is now just behind the scenes, I'm just uh, going to run a, a few uh, queries that's going to randomly select uh, a particular model and uh, you know update this information just to give you in real time. So I'm going to run ten queries and I've started the process. And what this dashboard will do is update in real time as these queries get run, show you uh, you know the the cost and the model that's being used and all of that. So uh, so for example, the most recent one we ran was uh, Llama seventy B. It took 14, you know, about 14 seconds. And, you know, we, we're just picking these questions out, out of a random list. So as you can see, the system continues to run. Now, let me speak a little bit about these different models. So Google has uh, the Gemini Pro, which is the, the, the most powerful model that they have now. And more recently, they've uh, it, it's been enhanced to support, uh, uh, you know, a million uh, token context window which is a huge amount of space for you to create a prompt. Um, and Text Bison is one of their older models and so on. Uh, we have three GPT models, including uh, Turbo, uh, GPT-4 Turbo, which is uh, interestingly enough, less expensive than GPT-4. And then we have uh, Mix, Mistral, Mixtral, and Llama uh, open source models. Uh, we also have a couple of models uh, that, that are uh, served by a company called Grok, G-R-O-Q. And these models are uh, hardware-based. So they give you super high performance and they've got a significantly low cost. However, they are not as good as uh, some of the more mature models like GPT or, or the Google Gemini. Uh, and I'll, I'll come back to you know how, uh, different ways to use these models in a bit. Uh, and then different quality capabilities like fresh data, like Sonar Medium Online gives you fresh data. So for example, uh, most models are uh, know only up to the point that they were trained, whereas some of these newer models actually uh, are continuously harvesting information so that they can give you news that's maybe even just 24 hours old. And then we have uh, the, the, the three important models from Anthropic, which is, uh, you know, creates really excellent models to do uh, you know, code generation. You can, you can take a picture of your screen and it'll interpret things for you and all of that. So these are just a bunch of different models that, we, that, that we're using. And I just wanted to show you the ability for us to uh, send queries uh, you know, on an ongoing basis to these, to these models and have them and have an ongoing computation of uh, cost and performance. Uh, we also measure quality and in that context, uh, the Grok models are interesting because uh, if uh, one of the things, one of the benefits you you have when you have cheaper models 
but very fast model is that you can use those to actually train the uh, the more complex models. So let's say I'm 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 building a you know I'm fine tuning a particular model that I'm using. Let's say with Google, I can I can use uh, there's a technique called distillation where I can have kind of a teacher student teacher model where uh, the the student the, the teacher model can run a whole bunch of queries and and create examples that are then uh, used by the student. I hope I said that right. The teacher creates a bunch of examples that are used by the students. And uh, since you're running a whole bunch of queries, you can run them on these uh, lower cost models. So there's many different uh, uh, benefits of use, having a wide variety of models to choose from. All right. So just wanted to show this to you. I'm going to jump back into the presentation now. Yeah, there are a couple of questions which have already come up, Pranjit, but yeah. I presume you uh -huh. would probably need a couple of demos before you take this in. Uh, I, I can take I can take them now, actually. If uh, Could you read them out for me? Sorry. Sure. I could take the first one, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, yeah. It is about, so the attendee is anonymous, but I will ask it anyway. It's about how do you measure the quality of a response from an LLM model? Okay. So, so when uh, when a uh, you know when a model responds, there are many different ways to measure the quality of the response. So they broadly uh, you can classify them into what are called objective measures, where you measure you, you you have a known data set against which you measure the performance of the model, and you can very uh, you know uh, uh, you can calibrate the capability of the, of the model really well. So uh, there's tools, uh, you know, there's measures like perplexity, which measures kind of the, your ability uh, to find a specific uh, chunk of text in a large document based on a question. There's, uh, there's obviously accuracy, which is, uh, you know, uh, pretty easy to understand, which is how accurate was the data compared, how accurate was the response compared to my data set. There's other, uh, you know, sort of uh, well-known, uh, mechanisms like rouge, which is uh, similarity. How, how how similar is my uh, response to a data set? And and you know BLEU blue meteor and things like that. Those are objective measures of quality, which are all based against a used uh, data set. There's also many subjective measures of quality, and those are harder to gather. But uh, I think uh, important. Uh, you know, every time you get a user to provide feedback on these uh, measures, it's, it's super useful. So these would include, what was the usefulness of the response? How complete was it? How correct was it? How relevant was it? Uh, how fresh was it? And then there's sort of uh, a next order of uh, yeah, subjectivity, which is, is this solution harmless or harmful? Is the solution ethical or non-ethical? So you can, you can uh, get into a whole collection of uh, uh, ways to measure the quality of the model. So. Hope that answers the question.